All right, so I'm hoping tech here works out. I'm uh, going to wait a little bit for people to get here. Just posted the link. Lots of tech difficulties trying to get this done, so I apologize for being a little bit behind. We got a few people coming in. Let me give it another minute and we're going to get started. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Uh, welcome, it's nice to finally be live streaming. So the point of this live stream was on Google Classroom during quarantine, I had an artwork tournament for um, my fellow students uh, to vote on their favorite artwork. So it has been a fun journey to see which artwork you guys chose as your favorite. I am shocked that the one chosen was this guy right here, uh, The Swing by Fragonard. So I have already recreated this um, in the past, and I'm glad I did because it took me about 10 hours to draw, which is a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. And sorry, the live stream's a little weird because I am doing a screen capture. I tried to do a window capture, and OBS was kind of being a nightmare. So to show how I want this to work, boop, I have a 30 second other video real quick to show off. So I've already drawn it in the past. So I have a video from Procreate that shows the entire drawing process condensed down. So I just want to show this quick one that I did of that six fan art challenge that was going around a while ago. Uh, just to show how this process works, I'll be talking about my recreation of Fragonard in a little bit, um, but I thought this 30 second of how I usually draw uh, would be a little bit more interesting to start the stream with, um, because the other one I approached like a painter rather than a digital artist. This is all done digitally using Procreate on the iPad. So that's just a little, little bit of a test to show how it works. So we are going to be looking at my attempt at recreating this masterpiece of Rococo art. And it's so detailed. It took me so long. I wanted to cry. Um, but that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I when I started this drawing, I wanted to get the basic idea. Let me full screen there. Oop, or not. Yay. I can do tech stuff. There we go. Starting over. Um, 
So I wanted to get the basic idea of the painting done. Because it is digital art, it wasn't going to look like it 100%. So right now you see me, I am laying out all the important details, the figures in the painting, and I'm just playing around getting all of them in place. The nice thing about doing this digitally instead of doing it as an oil painting is that I can move stuff whenever I want without having to go crazy and repaint a bunch of stuff. Next, I laid down a background color that kind of was reminiscent of the vibe of the painting. Um, not 100% any of the colors in there, just something so that when I started applying the different layers, it looked natural, that I wasn't fighting against a white background. So as I started, I wanted to start with the main focal point of the piece, the girl here, and it's going to zoom in on her in a second. Um, because she is the main focus of the piece, I really wanted to nail getting her looking good first and then kind of go from there. And if you guys want to interact in the chat, feel free to go ahead. I have that up, so I'm looking at those too. Um, but yeah, so the girl I found is the most interesting thing, and I think the reason why, there's a zoom in, uh, why this piece was chosen, it was between this and Starry Night. The reason why this one was chosen, I think, is because of how interesting this girl is on the swing. Your eye immediately goes to her, um, and she made an appearance in Frozen, which I am going to call out everyone who voted for this, that it was definitely Frozen, um, and no other reason. So I'm laying down the details here. When I rendered this, I noticed that both the video and the final image actually washed out a lot of my colors. When I was on the iPad, this was a lot brighter, a lot pinker, um, so I was a little shocked finishing it up and uh, transferring it to my computer and going, uh-oh, it's really dull and really blue, so I apologize. It's so much bluer than I wanted it to be. Um, but what I'm doing here is a painting technique in which I am laying down flat colors first and then I'm building up layers and layers of color on top of it um, to cre uh, create the volume of the person, of everything that I am doing. I'm building it up almost like I'm making it out of clay. So the shadows, the light source, all is layered on top. She's going to look like a demon for a little bit with the eyes. But I'm building up colors slowly, slowly but surely. Got more people joining. Um, so as as we're looking at the details here, talk about life stuff of school is finally ended. So yesterday was the official last day. Um, super emotional, so weird. I don't know what it's gonna look like when we go back to school. So that'll be interesting. Um, my house currently has a bunch of plumbing issues, so I was planning on doing this live stream on Monday, and then the plumbers came and tore up all of our wall, and I didn't want all of that noise in the background, and then I had issues figuring out some of the tech. So I apologize again for moving from Monday uh, to today, but it works out. It's a happy Friday. If you guys have any questions at any point, please feel free to go into the chat and I will answer any of those. It doesn't have to be about anything in particular. Um, so I'm getting details on the girl right now in the painting. It feels really weird talking to myself. <laughs> it's so strange. Um, but yeah, so getting details. Hands are the worst. I hate them. I was planning on doing a how to draw hands tutorial and I couldn't because I can't draw hands. This way in here, I'm cheating kind of. I'm kind of just putting blobs of color on top and that's how I draw hands is just blobs and blobs until it's like, it looks like a hand enough. Um, but as far as actually drawing, sketching hands, they're, they're not good. I'm not good at hands. Um, I'm adding details to the clothes right now and going through. So yeah, this um, this artwork was really fun to do. Uh, again, it took me about 10 hours to complete it, and that's with 
not counting breaks and all of that. I, I didn't go 10 hours straight. That would be insane. Um, but I like doing this kind of art because it is very reminiscent of what I did in college. So I did minor in art in college and I had little to no idea what I was doing with art. I, I sketched, I drew a lot of anime and um, a lot of fan art prior to my college years. Still do, still draw a lot of fan art now. Um, but I didn't know what I was doing until I started taking college classes. And one of the big things I learned uh, was from a painting class. I learned how to see color differently. So instead of just going at say like this bottom section here, it's like, oh, it's kind of pink and gray. I learned to layer pink uh, and then blue and then yellow on top of that and then a red until it got this weird neutral color. So it's, it's layering color and seeing it differently and seeing the world a little bit differently as color is just light and all of that fun stuff. So that's really what I learned in college. I learned how to refine my art. So any of you who are thinking about taking art classes in college, it is so revolutionary, um, the difference that you have. Because college art classes are usually you sit down for three hours and just work on an art piece for a month. Um, and forcing yourself to do that and to do difficult art things in that kind of frame, it really forces you to learn pretty fast. And it doesn't matter if you are having fun or not because it's a class, you have to get it done. Um, so a lot of times I like to give up on my artwork halfway through because I'm like, oh, it looks terrible. I guess it's going in the garbage now. Um, but college is like, nah, it's a grade, so you gotta finish it. And that just is, it's so hard, but I learned a lot. And that's why I was able to do something like this. And I was so terrified. When I saw this one was chosen, oh my God, <laughs> I was so scared. Um, it was this one I was scared of. And then there was Rachel Royce's flower vase, which is this super, super realistic um, flower rendering. And I was not prepared. I do not like flowers. Um, which most of the flowers here are blobs. So finished up the girl. Um, moving on, I started doing the swing because it is called the swing. So I figured probably should get that swing in there. Um, and you can see the side by side. Again, I'm not doing it 100% exact. And my version on my tablet is a lot closer to the colors than what you're seeing. It is still bluer, um, but I I was shocked again. It was really washed out seeing it on uh, what you guys see right now. Um, watching myself drawing is really weird. So I'm adding some of the tree trunk and all of that up in there, trying to get, again, this focal point of it done. Once this part is done, the rest of the drawing kind of falls into place a lot faster. So that was, that was what took me the longest, was getting her done and then getting the swing done. Everything else uh, took me almost the same amount of time as just doing her, which is crazy. Um, but that's because everything else in the painting itself is a lot lower detail. Although, as I was drawing it, it I kept discovering new and new features, like these little statues. I was like, okay, I, I see them, but then I was looking over here and there's a bunch of people on this statue and then there's like a bunny down here and then a easel. I just kept finding things. There's a building. Every time I thought, oh, I, I understand what's happening in this painting. It was like, surprise, it's an I Spy book now. Um, so that was a little difficult to work with. The Rococo art was like that. They put in a lot of detail and it was all kind of washed out. Um, so the detail is not seen right off the bat and that's just how that art movement was. It was very flamboyant, very bougie, lots of detail, but nothing too, too saturated. Um, usually not a huge fan of Rococo art just because of how washed out some things are. This one's different because of that, uh, central figure. Now I'm working on the... Uh, figure in the bottom left, creepy looking dude, 
Uh, the other dudes in here look like George Washington, and that's all I can imagine. I could not fathom the hair because of the George Washington wig. It was a little strange. Um, so that was a little bit hard to draw. I'm laying down the darkest color first on him um, as the base and then building up the layers of light because he is a figure that is shadowed. I wanted to put all my flats a little bit darker to force myself to um, actually bring out some of those details because I, I, I knew I was going to go too light if I started with the light color. So I started dark, kept it sh shaded, and that way the details really popped. Again, this is like my first time live streaming, so it's so strange to talk to myself. I do not, <laughs> I do not know what I'm doing. So thank you guys for your patience and watching this. This a lot of work. I'll have this posted up on Classroom later for those who couldn't make it. Four o'clock's a weird time, but it was the time that I had before plumbers came back and tore up my house some more. I'm living in a pile of mess. And I'm so tired. But it's fine. Everything's okay. Uh, so as the guy is being drawn, he didn't take me as long as the girl because he is not as detailed. Um, so he was, he was a lot easier, although trying to get his face was a lot harder because as I zoomed in, and you can kind of see it here because the video is a lot more pixely than what I, I was working with, but... I was still working with pixels. Where paint, you can get a paintbrush that's got one hair on it and still render something super detailed. I'm limited by the pixels of my tablet. So as I was getting closer on all these details, it was so hard to get like his face, the eyes and all that looking good um, because it was just getting blurry. So I'm happy with how it ended up. Um, drawing a hat right now, when I first looked at the image, I didn't see the hat, and I was like, oh shoot, there's a hat. So, Drew surprise hat. And as I finished up that hat, I started moving on to the last human figure in this. Um, he was hiding out in the corner, super dark, went with super dark colors. I moved him down a little bit as I saw the proportions of the painting kind of coming into pro uh, fruition. Uh, I'm working with a different aspect ratio than the original drawing. I'm using the um, size of my tablet, so everything kind of had to be squished a little bit differently. So when you look at the side-by-side -side again, after I zoom out, um, you'll see it's not a one-to-one -one perfect. But I thought I did a good job trying to get as close as I could. So he was really shadowed, so trying to find a lot of those different grayish, bluish dark colors to fill in his shadows was a little difficult. Um, I typically don't work super, super neutral, and a lot of the colors in here are really neutral. So that was a fun challenge to try to work with those neutral colors and layering neutral colors on top of each other. I have been drawing a ton over quarantine break. Um, which has been really nice. The quarantine is a blessing and yeah, troublesome at the same time, you know, a blessing and a curse. Um, so I've been able to work a lot on drawings because I have a ton of time. So that's nice. I do miss being in the classroom so much. Drawing the guy's creepy face right now. It was terrifying. I did not enjoy. Um, and then I started redoing the rope because it didn't fit his hand. Um, but yeah, so I miss being in the classroom. I noticed I'm an introvert. I don't like being around people too long, but I love teaching so much. That is my way of feeling better and letting my anxieties quell a little bit. So not being in my classroom for this long a period of time, I've been going a little crazy and it's really bad, but it's fine. I'm getting better at art. <laughs> That's my excuse. Um, right now I'm working on the little statues of the babies. I Babies are interesting because everything you know about people when you draw 
people versus drawing babies, you have to throw everything you know out the door because babies are just little chubby um, bags of bread. So how you draw them is more um, highlights and shadows on rolls and rolls of blubber versus here's bones, this is how a human works. You have to kind of envision them as a bag of slime or a bag of flour. It's really weird. Babies are weird. I don't like drawing babies, but I like how they came out. They didn't have to be super detailed. Um, I started working on another statue over on the left, and I was not jiving with any of these colors. I gave up pretty shortly. I got the face in, started adding some shadows, getting some of the light source. I moved the head down because I didn't have the proportion right. Um, but I got bored of it, so I moved on. <laughs> I came back to the statue eventually. Right now I'm adding in the foreground tree because I noticed I was, you know, about eight hours in and I was nowhere near close to being done with this thing and I wanted to finish to do this live stream today. Um, but I knew I had to get it done and I, the best way for me to feel comfortable about taking too long on a drawing is to knock out a huge part of it, something that's obvious like this foreground tree, the bushes that the guy is in right now. Um, if I got that out of the way, I would feel like I'm closer to being done and I would feel better about be about taking this long. I didn't want to do super, super detail on everything because that's how I started and it, it was just forever. So, you know, a professional artist can get bored of their stuff too. So I started adding background again. This is literally just to make me feel better about myself um, before I started working on the statue again. I started adding in, there was a secret building in the back, so I started adding in that building. And then I added in a lot of the background color before, there we go, I'm back at the statue. So I finally felt good about myself to go back to the statue and finish that up because I had my colors down again. I was doing a lot better timing wise, so now I can pop down and do a lot more detail work. So I couldn't tell as I was coloring this if it was a statue, if it was a person, so I kind of left some of the red peachy tones in just in case. Um, you kind of have to make up your own interpretation when you're doing these kind of things. I do like this picture a lot because everything, and you see I'll start working on, oh, or I did work on uh, some of that statue. There's these hidden figures that are also looking towards the girl, so everyone in the painting, even the statues minus the one angel baby right here, is all looking towards her, so towards the action. And that's a really cool part about this piece is it really draws your eye into her, to the action of the swing. So it's a really joyous, fun painting. I think at this point all the detail stuff is done, so now I'm gonna start working on getting all the trees. And I enjoy drawing people. I do not enjoy drawing nature at all. So I cheated a little bit, just a little bit. Um, on Procreate, they have a couple brushes that can do leaf texture. So I used that to do a lot of the leaves because typically when you do a painting, you never want to like stab the canvas with your paintbrush and go like, oh, look, it's, it's a tree. Um, it doesn't look 100% right. Um, in this case, that's kind of what I'm doing with this brush, but it's fine because it looks close enough. And sometimes that's just what you have to do in art. It's like, you know, if you don't look closely at it, it's, it's good. It's fine. Um, I didn't want to individually render every single leaf, which I would have done if it was a painting. I would have gotten a hard brush and really focused on getting those leaf texture a lot closer to the original. But for this, I was like, slap it on there, it's fine. I was doing this at 12 o'clock today, so noon, you know, I have the stream right now. I knew I had to get it done, so I was like, slap it on there, put the colors, go fast. Um, which is similar to how an artist would work normally. Um, if you're doing commission work, there's a level in which you have to um, say, I gotta do this as good as I can versus I gotta get it done. 
sometimes art, you just got to get it done. Um, so that's where I'm at right now in the picture. And I finish it up. That is the final version of the drawing. And I'm going to have a zoom in here so you can see some of the details. So yeah, the adventure was super fun. I thought I did a pretty good job. I've never done anything like this on my tablet before. Doing this kind of level detail was so crazy hard, but I had a ton of fun. It was challenging and I learned a lot and I think I actually am gonna be able to draw even better in the future from just doing this one drawing. So I appreciate all of this process. The tournament was fun to have fun way for us to connect over quarantine and I know it's hard to do classroom stuff online at home not actually at school but it was fun to see people every single week turn up and vote on their favorite artwork and this was the final result so here we're looking at the details you can see a little bit of that that fake brush that I had that did the leaves um, but it doesn't look too bad. I'm happy with it. It's really good. So yeah, that's Fragonard's The Swing. And because we have a little bit extra time, it was a little bit of a late start, I apologize. Sorry, I have a screen capture. I wanted to show a couple more. I started the stream off showing this, but now that I have a few more people, I wanted to show this process as well again. Uh, this was the six fan art challenge. It was a while ago, so I did Ty from Digimon, uh, the girl from Evangelion, I don't remember her name, Katara, Nezuko, Tali, and then Goku. These were all chosen by other people. And this is my typical way of doing digital art in which I do, here I'll pause, the line art, and then I do these flat colors, and then I do layers that are shadow, highlights, and then background detail, all that kind of stuff. I try not to do too much line art. I don't like lines. Um, so I like focusing on bright colors. So you can see how different this style is compared to this thing. <laughs> So again, this was crazy, crazy challenge. I loved doing it. It was fun. I felt closer. This is another one that I did um, that's closer to my drawing style. Oh, um, sorry. Noelia, I miss you too. It, it was fun in this process to be able to connect to you guys again. Um, in some way, I thought of you guys every single second that I drew. I miss... I miss the classroom so, so much. Let me bring up picture, the final, there we go. Um, but yeah, I miss, I miss this year. I miss being able to talk to you guys on a regular basis. Um, it's been, it's been challenging uh, to be away from you guys. So I'm sorry that this year ended more abruptly than we thought. Uh, so seniors that are watching, uh, good luck. The world will not stop for you, you know. Um, this really is going to be one of the weirdest, most difficult times in your life as far as a pandemic is not something you could ever predict, but it's a good message for all of life, you know. Life isn't predictable and we just got to go with the flow. Like me doing this drawing, I never thought I was going to have to do something this difficult and I worked with it and I overcome the challenge and look at the result. You know, I'm proud of this. So I'm proud of you guys, proud of my students. Um, I wish I could have seen more of your work. Feel free to come by anytime. I don't, again, I don't know what next year is going to look like. I don't know if we're going back 100%. I don't know if it's going to be... Um, once a week, twice a week, all the time. Who knows? It's still a big giant question mark. I hope it's going back and doing art and seeing people again. I really want that. Um, definitely doing, oh, 
Hi, Nadia. Um, definitely doing more club work. I want to do lots of art. We'll figure out some way to get this, to get this working again. Because I believe in you guys. I believe in school. I believe that we can overcome this as all obstacles. And I'm not going to get too gushy because I've already done a lot of crying. And I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's about it. If there's any questions, comments, you guys can always email me. I am more than willing to write anything back to you guys. My email will still be open all over the summer. Uh, when we come back, if anyone wants to visit that is gone, if you guys aren't too far, my classroom is always open. Uh, those of you who are not seniors, I will see you again, especially if you're an anime club and my Odyssey kids. So it'll be good to see you guys again. And I hope you have a wonderful summer. Enjoy. Do some art. Do something creative. Think of me. Because you guys were a wonderful, wonderful group to work with. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. It was nice seeing you guys again, even in this this little tiny world. So I'll have this up on Classroom later so you guys can look at the, the final version. I'll have the picture by itself. <laughs>